I came back to Saigon, came to Bangkok, and we were covering the, the evacuation of all the Vietnamese and everybody else. And I was waiting to get a hold of Sid Shanberg, who was a New York Times guy who had been kept, been in the kept, captivity of the, get, of the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. He was going to come out eventually through the border in Thailand. And uh, I came down with a case of dysentery. And it was, it was pretty rough. I was in the hospital for a while. I couldn't do everything. I couldn't function. Well. And the doctor said I ought to go back to, to Hong Kong. So I did, and the first morning I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't walk. I noticed I couldn't use my hands. I couldn't chew. I couldn't do anything. My kids were wheeling me around in a chair. And uh, uh, the doctors we went to didn't know what it was. One said, well, maybe, maybe you've got a blood disease. And with that, I called my old doctor in LA. And I said, listen, this sounds more serious than I thought it was. What do you think? He said, get on a plane, come home right away. So I packed up all our things for the moment, shut the apartment. We went out, took a plane and flew to Los Angeles and I went to UCLA's hospital. And uh, they knew what was wrong with me right away. It was Reuters syndrome. It's a, it's a, affects your body, your, your it's, a, it's a genetic problem. And uh, they cured it, you know, pretty easily and put me on st steroids and I've taken 20 aspirins a day, gulping my Lanta for six weeks. And uh, when I wanted to finally, when I felt well enough, I wanted to leave, Small wouldn't send me back. Well, there'd been some bad blood between him and me. And uh, so I stayed in Los Angeles, but it was only a matter of time until I decided to leave. CBS. Yeah. And I was given this offer to work for governor, first for the, yeah, for Governor Jerry Brown as his deputy campaign manager for media in 78 when he's running for re-election. And I did that. I'd met him at a press conference and he was, we had gone back to the hotel where I was, he'd give me a ride and he said, what do you guys know out there? What do you know still? And I said, well, I think we know more than you do. I said, you keep on seeing this business about small is beautiful that um, we can do what Burma's doing. I said, Burma's not California. I said, this logic that somehow what can happen in the third world can happen here is just ridiculous. Anyway, he took it seriously, and anyway, he asked me to be his press secretary for the campaign. But I always took the job with the, with the commitment on my mind, I was not gonna do this permanently. I did not wanna go to Sacramento. I didn't wanna work for him. So I, I got an insight into what it was like. And as I say to people, journalists, whoever asked me, and they do ask me a lot. If I, just a couple of days before we had this interview, I was asked. I think every journalist thought I worked for a politician one time. You see how cynical, dishonest, immoral <laughs> they can be. Even the ones who look good. Just the, polit the, dry, the money in politics is drives people to do things they just normally wouldn't do. I'm not saying that Jerry Brown was dishonest, but the system just corrupts you. So anyway, uh, so then I did that, and then I was offered a job by the president of the president of the all the University of California Systems to be his public affairs advisor. And I did that for a year. I didn't want again. I didn't want to go to Berkeley full time. He wanted to hire me full time. I didn't want to do that because my wife by that time had begun to develop an antique business. She was happy in Los Angeles. And then uh, USC called me, University of Southern California and said, how about coming down and talking to us about teaching? And I said, well, you really can't teach journalism, I don't think. I said, well, come down and talk to us about it. Well, 24 years later, <laughs> after having been at SC and attained the rank of full professor, now Professor Emeritus, and having worked with young people, it was a very satisfying, fulfilling experience because I created an international program in which we brought working journalists back for a year to uh, do um, a year master's degree program in specializing on Latin America. I'd originally hoped it would be in Japan or Asia, but it was too expensive. So we looked at other alternatives, and one was Mexico and Central America. And I did that. 
And uh, so I've done all these kinds of things. I've been a Pulitzer Prize judge. I have this committee that I'm interested in. Uh, I've gotten scholarships for people. And uh, it's been a good life.